For he rescued us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. 그는 보이지 아니하시는 하나님의 형상이요 모든 창조물보다 먼저 나신 자니라. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished on us. Seine Gnade ist so groß, dass unsere Freiheit mit dem Blut seines Sohnes erkauft hat, so dass uns unsere Sünden vergeben sind. En el amor no hay temor, sino que el perfecto amor echa fuera el temor. By this Love is perfected with us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Crimson flow, once shed for me, my life I owe, my saving King. His blood has paid my ransom fee, O oh, crimson flow that set me free. Oh, the blood of Christ, oh, the blood of Christ.
to the one in the throne Your name is worthy to be glorified Glory to the Lord of Lords Glory to the one in the throne Your name is worthy to be glorified Glory to the Lord of Lords Glory to the one in the throne Your name is worthy to be glorified Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory 
by His blood. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All visible and invisible. To the ends of the earth He is He is He is He has delivered us From the power found forgiveness from our sins by His blood. For by Him all things were created in heaven and on earth. All visible and invisible
Understanding of surrender. And if we could really understand, really grasp, to know the simplicity 
and the power of giving ourselves to you completely, Lord. A place where nothing matters than to give you all of me. So let me pour my love on you like fragrance from my heart. Feel i 
Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory to the one in the throne. Your name is worthy to be glorified. Glory to the Lord of Lords. Glory to the one in the throne. concern there's only one concern that I have I'm not worried about the band getting the music right I'm not worried about the arrangements I'm not worried about any of that the only thing that I'm concerned with is when those open moments of worship um, come up am I going to be able am I going to be sensitive enough to steward it properly and like this morning was the same thing when that's when he started moving I feel like we were able to just kind of set sail with him and, uh, and accomplish what we needed to accomplish today. for the upcoming top secret all, all recording and uh, going, so we're basically like, trying to knock out all the arrangements yeah, for should, each song um, you know, we're basically trying to like not rebuild every song from scratch there'll be some familiar songs there'll be some new songs we're not trying to do everything really from scratch yeah. but we are trying to put some uh, fresh oregano as opposed to the old spice what if you did that but without the four on the floor like everybody else just pushes that save me that set me free. The, the arrangement to this is, and I don't know when you guys, when we're planning on the vocals coming in, but it's probably back from you. Did you guys do harmonies for that?
guitar. This is my guitar. And this is a pedal. 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 No, I've got Delay uh, by Line 6 and TC Electronics, Nova Delay, which is awesome. Um, and this is uh, called a tube driver. It's like a special pedal made by a company in Oklahoma. And then this is Barber Direct Drive. It's an excellent pedal. This is a Boss Blues driver, but it's got the Keeley mod, which makes it fatter. This is a compressor, and this is my solo boost. And this is my Guitar Center $7 tuner. Uh, I'm using uh, Roland Tuner G, a very nice keyboard by Roland. And I'm using uh, Logic's main stage on a Mac computer. I love apples. An apple a day keeps the doctor away. We have the Yamaha controller and uh, MM Audio sound card and a Korg MIDI controller thing. I'm using a Mark II Fender Rhodes, um, the Power Booster, my Nano Pedals, and a Tremolo at Boss. It just adds a little, this has a little more juice, this has a little bit of character to it. I'm not using that pedal. And uh, using an S90 ES uh, by Yamaha. And that's actually just using one patch in it, just natural panel. My name is Julie, it's my second semester here at CFNI, and I'm in the choir for the live recording. I'm so excited, God is moving, the Lord is just going to be all over this. He's just, it's going to be an awesome time. When I think of perfect love, uh, I really think of the word sacrifice. And growing up, my dad was the epitome of perfect love to me. He just gave and gave and gave without really expecting anything back, without expecting anything in return. And, um, and really, that gave me the best picture of what God is to, to us as um, his children, is that he gives and he gives and he gives without expecting anything back, without expecting us to act a certain way, without expecting us to do good works for him. He just loves us and, and doesn't complain when we don't. And uh, I know not everybody really had that father and not everybody um, has the best image of who God is because of that. I just wanna say, God is your father. And he is uh, the epitome of perfect love. Tanaka Micha to imas. Kami sama no ai wa kanpeki na ai desu. Oku tachi wa hito to no kankei no naka de, kobito to no kankei no naka de, kazoku to no kankei no naka de, taisetsu no hito to no kankei no naka de, honto ni kare ra ga jibun ni nani o shite kureru no ka, nani o dore dake shite kureru no ka ni honto ni torai ware gachi desu kedo, kami sama no ai wa あなたがどんなことをしていようとあなたが何が神様のためにできようと神様あなたのことを愛しておられますそれが神様の完璧な愛です Basically, selflessness is the biggest definition for perfect love for me Love is like being a connection with the Lord and your family and that's really how I think love is that's what it's to me I think the best way for me to define perfect love is to talk about um, my dad. He is the perfect definition of love for me. Um, 
My mom had me out of wedlock, and she was a single mom for the first four years of her life, and we lived with my grandparents. And um, when I was about three, she started dating my dad. And um, when I was four, they got married. Um, and at the wedding, he decided that it would be a good idea that when he, gave the, when he was giving his vows to my mom, that I should be involved. And so he bought me a little wedding dress and a little wedding ring. And when he said his vows, he said them to both of us. And um, about a year or two later, we went through the adoption process so that I could like absolutely be his daughter. And um, it was just, even at a young age, even though I was five or six years old, I still remember just feeling so important and so special because my daddy wanted me. It wasn't something that he was obligated to do. He really wanted to have me. He wanted me as his daughter. Um, it was just such a beautiful definition of love for me. And it stuck with me every day of my life. You know, any time that I was discouraged, you know, my dad picked me. He loves me enough to show me by adopting me. You know, it's helped me a lot in the way I view my Heavenly Father because he has adopted me as his daughter. And um, his love outstretches anything that I could possibly imagine. Even when I feel unwanted, even when I feel like I'm not desirable, he shows me that, you know what, I picked you, I handpicked you, and you're beautiful, and I want you just the way you are. In Zimbabwe, the financial situation is not stable at the moment, and an average person who's going to work every day gets um, an income per month that is not even enough to go with them five days or to go through them to get their family through the month. And my family is back in Zimbabwe right now. We live in a attached house in the outskirts of our main city. There's no electricity there well, where we stay and um, we have to use firewood to make our food. So the situation there is a bit um, unstable. And I'm so grateful to God for his such perfect love and that he can hear our prayers and answer our needs whenever we ask for it. Para mí, amor perfecto es entregarle a otra persona algo de parte de ti que es muy valioso para ti, independientemente de que si esa persona lo merece o no. Es tomar lo más valioso que tú tengas, lo más apreciado que tú tengas, tú lo tomas y se lo das a alguien que es la última persona que su, tú se lo daría. Eso es amor. El amor perfecto cubre lo imperfecto. Perfect love, uh, one of the, the, it goes back to the commandment of, um, you know, to love God and love people. I could have this awesome relationship with God and have all these amazing experiences and have this wonderful relationship, but I think where it falls short is when we don't express it, you know, with other people. Um, the same kind of love that He's shown us, uh, it needs to be shown not just as individuals, but corporately um, with people that we do and we don't like. I hope as you've watched this DVD that it's really touched your heart as much as it touched our hearts. You know, the whole concept and vision behind what we're doing is perfect love. I think that's because we found that perfect love in Jesus Christ. If you haven't found that perfect love in Jesus Christ yet, then I want to challenge you to do something. I want to challenge you to get down on your knees and say into the heavens, say, Oh God, if you hear my voice, please forgive me of my sin and wash me clean that I may know your perfect love so that I can give love to others. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. I, I knew I wanted to write something very intimate, very soft, that wouldn't require much, um, not many chords, not, you know, not much music around it, and just like the lyrics would, would really take it. And uh, I, I wanted to, to want it to be something that we could give to God, something that we could, uh, a melody we could pour out to the Lord in, 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 in the quietness and in the, in the peacefulness of, of His presence. And I didn't come up with anything. And so I actually went to sleep and um, and I, actually, I grabbed the guitar, I took the guitar from my living room into my, my bedroom and I was, I was just playing, playing some chords and all of a sudden the melody started um, and then I'm like, okay, what time is it? It was about 1.30 in the morning and then about 2.30 I actually finished it. I went in to get my Bible and I went to get my, my book and then I, I sat down next to my bed and I started writing it and tweaking it, this and that and, and, that's, and what came up from the, from the middle of the night, you know, being with God, just worshiping. So let me pour my love on you like fragrance from my heart and feel
My name is Matt Birkenfeld. I'm Josh Hickman. Uh, we co-authored the song O Crimson Flow, and that was an adventure. It's totally different writing songs with somebody else than when you're just writing it by yourself. The specific thing itself, uh, talking about the blood of Christ, was inspired by hearing one of our worship pastors talking about just the dynamic that the blood of Christ has in worship. You know, it's only by the blood of Christ that we draw near. And so that, that started an idea, it planted a seed that was watered by my love for hymns. Uh, actually, I got the first verse when I was driving to school one day. It was totally random. Uh, thankfully, I was at a stoplight. So what I did is I just grabbed my pen and wrote it down on the nearest receipt that I could find because I didn't have any paper. Uh, first thing I did is I came and I showed it to my friend Ben. And all he said was, this is amazing. You've got to continue this. And a couple days later, I was actually driving to school again, and I got the third verse. We ended up going to a, a music room and just sat down on a piano and kind of just figured out a theme for the song, which, which is the blood of Christ. And it just came out, the course came out, oh, the blood of Christ. And then he came back a day later, or a couple days later, and he had a third verse. And we kind of messed around with that and ended up having a song that we really thought was good. My name is Dennis Campos and I'm the director of the School of Worship and Technical Arts at Christ for the Nations Institute. Wonderful God, um, I wrote during the Christmas break um, between the semesters here at Christ for the Nations. I actually went home and I was sitting around with my two little brothers and my two little brothers are actually the musicians. Uh, two of the musicians on my church, one of them plays electric guitar and one of them plays bass. So um, we were just, um, I bought them a piano for Christmas and uh, we, were, we were gathered around, the three of us were playing, one of them was on bass, one was on guitar, and I started bring, getting a melody, I'm like, hey, play this, play this, so the three of us actually started playing it, um, and they just, uh, the, the actual words came from wanting to exalt God, just wanting to ha write a song that, that would say, you know, um, you're the joy of every nation, you know, you're the giver of salvation, and to, to uh, encapsulate it, it would be, you're the wonderful God. Hi, my name is Gabriel Allred. Uh, I'm one of the lead worshipers at Christ for the Nations Institute here in Dallas. A song that I just recently wrote came from uh, Colossians 1, 13 uh, through 16. And uh, it's a scripture that I've, I've come across so many times over the last couple of years. And I've got it highlighted and underlined and little asterisks and stuff next to it because it's like every time I'd read it it was quite seriously like the the words were grabbing me by the shirt and say sing me and uh, so I finally heeded to uh, its violence so I opened it up pulled out some paper started writing and uh, really hoped that uh, because I felt like the way the scripture was it didn't need to be touched much at all, if, if at all, uh, as in trying to reword it to make it uh, something else. And um, so I really wanted to try to leave the scripture intact, you know, maybe sing a verse here or something like that, but leave the way, I'm reading out of a New King James, um, and just sing it, basically verbatim. What a novel idea, sing the Word of God. Heaven and on earth, all 
Perfect Love, I actually wrote about three years ago, and um, I think it's a mixture of Psalm 23 and Psalm 91, because it talks about being in the shadow of his wings, and that's what I was thinking of. Uh, I guess when I wrote that part, I had just written, uh, I, I just read Psalm 91, but I, I wanted to rephrase Psalm 23 and the fact that the peace he gives us, you know, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want, he makes me lie in green pastures, and just the peace that, that you find, the peace that I would see David writing with, and you know, just lying there, you know, while, while the sheep were, you know, playing around, eating or whatever. He was just lying there in a place of peace. And um, and then also from the scripture that says, your perfect, uh, you know, perfect love casts away all fear. And so I guess th that song is just a combination of, of three different scriptures that came about and worked together. I, I led it in a different key, and I was actually leading. It was for a guy to lead. And... Um, I kind of had a duet with a girl and it kind of to make it a little bit sweeter because the words are very sweet on them and it just didn't work. And for about a couple of years, I just didn't sing it. I just said, it's, you know, it's not a song to be sung and it just doesn't work. That's what I thought about my song. And, and then this year uh, came up and I said, let me change the key to the song because I remember the words are beautiful. So I said, let me change the key and see if a girl can sing it. And then I got one of the girls to sing it on my team and it just totally changed it. I came back from a, a missions trip and the Lord had taught me so much and I was just so broken and open before Him. And out of that, um, I was able to write the verses, the verses to the song. And I remember putting the bridge and I really loved the bridge because when I put the bridge in, it wasn't actually supposed to be in there, but that was everything that my heart was saying. Um, you know, it says, you deserve it all because, you know, you are worth it all. And I wrote this, the song kind of in a line of a story. And, you know, and then it goes to the bridge and it says, and I give everything, I give everything. I have no intention of holding anything back from you. And that last line of the bridge was kind of my heart saying to God, you know, I don't care what I have to go through. I don't care what I have to do, you know, I will do whatever you want me to do because, you know, no matter what this life brings or no matter what even I can do, you know, you are worth it everything. You are worth it all and you deserve everything that I can give. Hi, my name is Christian Baker, and uh, I'm the worship director for Youth for the Nations. I was inspired to write uh, Glorify Our King really 
it was kind of random. I just kind of got this this hook line. Um, started out as freedom, and it which is not really anything about the song now, but um, I just kind of developed it and worked on it and worked on it, and eventually, like I kind of got a revelation of of that I really wanted to portray um, as a generation to step out and declare um, that their God is is glorious and He's their King, and that. Um, it's time for them to really just stand up and, and not be afraid to be there and, and be the light that he's called us to be and, and show the world uh, that he is our king. If you're like a songwriter out there and you, you feel like um, you just you don't know how to really songwrite, uh, just something that just to inspire you, I guess, would be don't limit yourself. Like get away, find different places to go and get inspired. Listen to different um, music that would inspire you musically. If maybe you write mostly on the musical side and lyrics come that way, or read you know poems or stuff like that that are very vivid, very uh, have a lot of imagery, you know, in a sense um, that really inspire your creativity to really grasp and and apply that um, to your songwriting. So uh, just really just focus on just being yourself and, and allowing God uh, to speak through what you say as well. ask myself is you know how can I be of contribution you know how can I help people reach this you know his presence his you know his holy place and I feel like I I can achieve that by writing songs that really you know make people you know think about the different things that God has done in his life in their lives my name is uh, MC Hernandez and I was inspired to write something so real about a year ago when I went on a mission trip and the focus of our mission trip was really, you know, just expressing the love of Jesus to everyone that we came in contact with. Even though I know that's always your main focus, but that's really what we wanted to emphasize. And that kind of, that idea just kind of stuck with me throughout the whole trip and throughout, you know, the rest of the month and a few months later I um, I was I just sat down at the piano and I wrote down ideas, you know, everything that came to my mind, you know, his his love, everything that it is, and experiences that I had in my life and in the mission trip and just everything. And before I knew it, I had a whole page really filled of just ideas and thoughts and meaningful words, and from that the song just kind of birthed itself, really. Mm -hmm. 